planet Earth is almost 4.6 billion years old and is now home to millions of species, including humans. However, it has not always been so welcoming for life in the past as it has moved from one extreme state to another. Life has responded to these changing environments, adapting and evolving, which in turn has had a profound effect on the Earth. The history of life and the history of Earth are very much intertwined. This is especially true of the Precambrian time spanning 85% of Earth's history is when the most biologically important events occurred on Earth. Geological time is vast and can be difficult to comprehend. If this graduated cylinder represents geological time, where one centimeter is equivalent to 100 million years, then only one drop of liquid represents man's existence on the planet. Earth formed approximately 4.6 billion years ago with the formation of our solar system and was initially a ball of molten rock. Regular meteorite bombardment kept the Earth's surface molten and prevented life from forming. Approximately 4 billion years ago, the impact frequency tailed off. The Earth began to cool and the magma began to solidify into the core, the mantle and the crust. Water brought in on comets and outgassing by volcanic activity produced a CO2 rich atmosphere and green oceans. The remnants of the early crust is exposed in the tectonically stable cratons around the world today. This crust consists of 90% granite and 10% lava and sediments. Granite was more resistant to weathering than early basalts because it was more quartz rich. The sample shown is from an early craton. It is an acastonite, which is a metamorphosed granite exposed in the northwest of Canada. This rock has been dated as 4,000 million years. The Earth's magnetic field was formed approximately 3.5 billion years ago. It protected the atmosphere from the solar winds and the shielding of UV radiation allowed for the development of the first life forms on the planet. Early Earth promoted chemical reactions which allowed organic compounds, the basis of life, to form from inorganic molecules in a primordial soup. There is strong evidence for the existence of life from about 3.5 billion years ago. The earliest forms of life on the planet were prokaryotes, unicellular organisms which lack cell organelles such as a nucleus and reproduce asexually. It's thought that life first evolved in the shallow oceans where water and light are abundant. The best evidence for early life are structures called stromatolites. The oldest known fossils on Earth, stromatolites are seen in the fossil record from about 3.5 billion years ago and were abundant throughout the Precambrian. These dome-like structures are made up of fine layers of sediment which is trapped on top of microbial mats. To see active stromatolites today, you would have to travel all the way to Sharks Bay in Australia. I'm here in Shark Bay, Australia. Stromatolites are able to thrive here because the highly saline waters keep out any potential grazers. Microbial communities like these produce huge amounts of oxygen which eventually fill the atmosphere. The oxygenation of the planet by the photosynthesizing stromatolites changed the course of evolution for both the planet and life. The oxygen initially reacted with the iron in the ocean, creating the banded iron formation. The banding effect was due to seasonal production of oxygen. The rusting of the Earth's primitive ocean would have given it a red colour. Only when all this iron had reacted could the oxygen remain in the atmosphere. The oxygenation of the atmosphere happened over millions of years and had a profound effect on the climate and the weathering of rocks. The oxygenation of the atmosphere was a crucial development which allowed for the evolution of more complex life forms. Between approximately 2.1 to 1.6 billion years ago, the eukaryote cell evolved. Eukaryotes, the ancestors of multicellular organisms, were a leap forward in complexity containing specialized organelles. They may have originated when one cell engulfed another in order to eat it, but instead they formed an endosymbiotic relationship. The smaller cell became a mitochondrion, producing energy for the larger, and both cells functioned as a single organism. They can also reproduce sexually. This is of enormous significance as it allows variety and promotes evolution. Approximately one billion years ago, the Earth's continents moved together into a supercontinent known as Rodinia. Without an ozone layer, life could not tolerate the exposure to UV radiation, and it was therefore a barren continent. The Earth was to experience an event that was to shape the next 350 million years of Earth's history. The formation of the supercontinent Rodinia prevented the circulation of equatorial ocean currents to polar regions. 
This caused ice to form at both poles and quickly spread towards the equator, helped by the albedo effect. The entire planet was covered in ice. This was known as Snowball Earth. During this time, life was restricted to deep oceans under the ice. The end of Snowball Earth is thought to be due to the build-up and eventual release of heat under Rodinia in large volcanic eruptions which pumped enough CO2 into the Earth's atmosphere to warm the planet. Finally unrestricted, life would have exploited all opportunities and niches available, and rapid evolution and diversification would have ensued at the end of the Cryogenian. This is shown clearly with the enigmatic Ediacaran biota. Approximately 600 million years old, the Ediacaran biota are the oldest multicellular organisms known. They are soft-bodied organisms and are found in event beds, being buried by turbidites or ashfalls, with preservation possibly aided by microbial mat death masks. Their affinity with modern organisms are still debated today. The lack of a mineralized skeleton and the absence of predators suggests that these organisms lived peacefully in what's been termed the Garden of Ediacara. This peaceful existence ended 542 million years ago with the Cambrian explosion and the appearance of most of the major phyla we see today. Life and the planet have had a complex relationship, but the question remains, is life down to chance or is it a planetary process? In truth, the answer lies just beyond our grasp, but maybe only for the moment.